Coach Silverfield. All right, let me start by saying uh, this is a great win for our university and our city. But, you know, on uh, Thursday, I went to Dan Bartow's visitation and he had his funeral after. So our thoughts were with him uh, tonight in this win. That was for him and his family. And then also uh, couldn't ask for a better afternoon evening to honor Isaac Bruce at the game. Uh, he was the last uh, Tiger team that beat Mississippi State. So uh, that was for you, Isaac. Appreciate you, and you, you truly are the greatest of all time. And I'm glad to represent you in a, a small way uh, tonight. So that was for you. But again, just so proud of our guys. You know, last year we use the word resiliency all the time. And man, oh man, did we show that tonight? Kids got grit, they got fight. I talked to them all week about playing for 60 minutes, the focus for 60 minutes. And that's really what it came down to in discipline. I knew the energy was there, I knew the effort would be there. Uh, effort's non negotiable in our program, but to be able to focus and come out of halftime. When things didn't look great, um, the kids keep battling. And just so proud of, you know, the defensive effort. You want to talk about special teams from Calvin Austin to our hands team. Uh, J.J. Russell having record number of tackles. I mean, just it's so great. And just, it, again, so many of our guys stepped up in so many different ways. And, again, just it's just hats off uh, to our young men that this was 1,000% for them, uh, that they did it and they battled through. And, man, it was awesome to have a full stadium again. Just <laughs> – uh, I'll, I'll get this. I'll have the smile for a couple more hours, and then I gotta go prepare for UTSA. But man, it, it was just so awesome to have our great fans there, and they made all the difference. Terry, then Isaac. Hey, congrats on the win, Coach. Thank you, Terry. Hey, you know, a lot of coaches say it, it was a complete victory. Every team uh, produced, and tonight, all three of your team scored. But before the game, I heard Coach Paul talking to your defensive line. How important was the defensive line to securing this win? Yeah, look, we. Uh, we constantly talk about how we wanted to get more pressure on the quarterback, but we also had to be smart with it, right? Anytime they spread you out and the air raid uh, offense, we've got to be diligent in what we're doing, you know, not just from a pass rush, you know, but also uh, to stop some of the run. You know, they don't run the ball a ton, but uh, please with our defense line, we're, the nice thing is uh, we're not satisfied. And that's the great thing about this group of young men. I mean, the very first thing is you guys know, I'm going to meet with them uh, tomorrow afternoon and I'm going to talk about how much more work we need to do. And uh, and guess what? Our guys will nod their head and say, yes, sir, let's get back to work. And that's why I love this group. And they're, and they're just hungry and they care and they fight. Isaac and then Evan. Hey, Coach. First off, congratulations congratulations on the win, man. A wild one tonight. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, when, when you look back now, 14 games into your head coaching career at Memphis, I know as a coach you say every game is, is, is important, but how would you kind of rank this one in, in the 14 games that you've coached? Yeah, look, they're uh, I always say, and this is not coach speak. The next most important one is the next one. So, um, look, I'm, I'm, am I going to enjoy this? Absolutely. And am I proud of our guys? Absolutely. And I think more than anything, it's just the understanding that we were able to beat a team that's regionally. You know, I was fortunate to be part of the you know team that beat Ole Miss and, and UCLA. And, you know, credit to our former head coach that did such a great job. But, you know, here's a team, again, another regional team uh, that came here. And I think more than anything, Isaac, the way this game was won, it wasn't a shootout. It was a um, fight tooth and nail in and, and different ways, right? And we saw our defense and special teams step up. And uh, we continue to learn a lot about our team, but just so proud of their determination. And so you know, where does this rank look? This one, like I said, this wasn't a, this has nothing to do with me. This is about our young men. So I'll remember this one because it just showed the determination. And then, you know, to be able to honor Dan and Isaac. And this is good for our city. Evan, and then Frank, and then Jeff. Yeah. Ryan, 2009, you guys had to win that game with your defense, considering kind of how we had questions about the defense after Arkansas State. How much does it mean that the defense, guys like J.J., Ruben, um, Quindell Sanchez, how much does it mean for those guys to kind of step up in that side of the ball to really kind of, you know, push this over the line, if you will? Yeah, Evan, look, you know, without the, you know, we, we talked about it, you know, we talked about it on Monday when you guys asked me, and even on, you know, after last game, what do we got to do to get the defense better? And I, and I told you, I think they will. And they'll continue to get better, you know, game in and game out. But so proud of their effort. I mean, to go out there and do what they did down and down out and, and keep playing and get finding ways to get one more stop, it was huge. And, uh, you know, credit to Coach McIntyre and his defensive staff, but, those guys battled and they battled right all the way down to the uh, that goal line stand and then to the stop of the two point conversion. It, it's just, it was wonderful to see. And I think one of the things, Evan, that will give us confidence, right? Not cockiness, confidence, because we still got a lot of work to do. And we know we got a tough UTSA team coming to uh, the Liberty Bowl here next week. And then for me, Frank obviously, Jeff, oh, sorry, Evan, go ahead. Sorry. Obviously, Calvin's punt return wasn't just 
incredible for speed for his intelligence. Um, how much credit do you give um, Coach Bankins for that? And also Austin just having the heads up play to just realize, hey, there's a live ball on the ground. Go get that sucker. Well, Coach Bankins goes over every type of scenario at nausea. And that's what you want a thorough special teams coordinator to do. Obviously, he's a vet coach. He's done a fantastic job. But, man, credit to Calvin. Look, I, I can't sit there and say I was yelling to pick up the ball. I wasn't. Uh, Calvin Austin is uh, as, as intelligent and uh, determined as a young man as they come. And he understood and saw what happened and uh, got it and picked it up. And thank goodness. And uh, just, just look, when you have smart young men that are really fast, it makes a great combination. Frank and then Jeff. Hey, Ryan, this is the first game your offense didn't necessarily have the, the fast start that we saw the last two weeks. What did you think about their way to respond after having a tough first half? Yeah, Frank, look, all defenses we're going to face, and, you know, pregame, I talked about keys to victory was handling ebbs and flows of this game. And, Frank, I knew there was going to be some. They're going to get some tackle for losses. They're going to get some tackle. They, they're a dominant defense, and they're legit, and we know it. Uh, they've, they've done a fantastic job, you know, uh, over Mike Leach's time there of stopping the run. Uh, you look at what they did to Georgia last year in the run game. It gives you big marriage, and um, they, they stood tall and strong. And, uh, but, our, look, our guys were trying to work. You know, the one thing, there was no panic in the locker room. You know, and even after that opening drive, uh, you know, to start the second half, it was not beautiful. But guess what? You know, when you have an 18 year old with Moxie at quarterback that just says, I got this, and, uh, you know, throw an interception, then go make the tackle. And the great news is our defense was playing their tails off. So it gave everybody a lot of belief. And just like I said, man, I, I didn't, when I walked up and down the sideline, I didn't see a single young man hanging their head. They just kept nodding and said, We got this, we got this. And, man, it makes my job easy when I got, you know, those type of young men on our sideline that I absolutely love that will freaking fight their tail off for us. And then uh, yeah, three games in. Oh, go ahead, Frank. Sorry, man. Uh, three games into the season. Uh, what are you liking out of what you see um, from this team after the first three games? Uh, offense and defense, just the way you guys are mailed. Well, I, I think, you know, in each game, we've seen flashes from each unit, offense, defense, and special teams. And I think that's the key. I, I would not be happy if this was a um, totally dominated by an offensive type game or totally de dominated by defense or especially, I think what you want to see is some balance. And you know, the question was asked earlier is, were you pleased with the defense effort? Absolutely. And uh, there's going to be give and take. If you go back to last year, right, the Central Florida game, the offense, you know, was scoring at will. And then, you know, then you look at the Navy game and the defense, man, played their tails off. So that's college football this day and age. But uh, what I've learned about this team is they're, they're, so hungry to get better, so hungry to work. Uh, they care. They, they look, the guys in the locker room were happy. They celebrate, and rightfully so. But they understand, man, that, that's a great win, great win for them. Um, but it's on to the next one. And that's what I love about these guys. And I've told you guys that this is my sixth year here. And the, the type of young men that we have in our locker room, it, it's such an honor, a, a pleasure to be around these guys. And look, could, could I, we put any more further proof out there than the way they battle tonight? Hey, Brian, <clears throat> thank, uh, congratulations. Do you, um, uh, on, on the Doyle kick, the 51 yarder, what was your thinking there? Did you know he had the leg uh, to do that? And then the other question is, were you sure when Calvin was running that back that it was stand? Like, did you did you know exactly what was happening there? Those are my yeah, so Let's start with the Doyle kick. You know, analytics actually told me that we should have actually gone for it. Um, and, you know, I looked over at Joe, I said, you got, he goes, I got the leg for it because I don't know if I'll, you know, but sure enough, he knocked that thing in and, Man, Joe Doyle has been the Swiss Army knife. Just pleased having him, and uh, he's been a joy to have around. And then with Calvin's punt return, look, um, like I said, all due respect to Calvin. I, I didn't, I wasn't sitting there yelling. He, he, he's such a smart and understands football. Uh, when, when he saw the ball hit off the guy, he did it. And, and, you know, the young man, after he scored, I think I quickly gave him a high five, and I was making sure the replay was good. But, uh, yeah, we felt comfortable. Uh, there were some things. You know, the, the official apologized to me. Um, he said that he actually – lost 10 seconds by blowing the timeout too early. Uh, he said the goalpost blocked his view. Um, so he said it was his fault because we would actually like to run um, some more time off. Look, I'm not here to question officiating. I'm glad we got out of there with a win. Last one. Um, did on the, on the wildcat, the fake huddle wildcat thing, what, 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 what went into that genius call? I don't know. I mean, gosh, that, <laughs> let's blame me. That, that was a stupid idea by me. Um, you know, that we had seen Kentucky run some wildcat versus them in, in the years past. And 
I, you know, we got such great offense. All of our coaches are awesome. And they dwell into the film and that was a dumb idea by me. So, you know, shame on no, me. The fake, the fake one where you fake the snap and then, and then. Oh, well, that, yeah. The wild, yeah that, that was a, yeah. Credit to coach Johns. But if you guys remember, we did that versus central Florida. Geez, I want to say 2017 or 18. So that was an old trick out of the playbook. Uh, you know, it's just part of it. And the excellent execution by our young men. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the, the Wildcat. No, no, I wasn't. Being, I, I'm, not, I'm not picking on you after yeah, that. You're not coming at me hard. I love it. Appreciate <laughs> it. Save the tough ones for uh, the. Yeah, no, I'm not picking you after that one. That was good. Mike, Mark, and then Terry. Ryan, congrats. I'm sorry I can't get my camera to work up here, but. Uh, just the rule itself on the punt return, just to make sure we know, the ball, even though the ball was down, even when it wasn't whistled dead, is that what allows Calvin to pick it up and yeah, go with it? it? Yeah, it touched somebody. So the exact rule without getting to Appendix 9, Rule C, Letter F, you know, Roman numeral 2, it was that it, the punting team it hit a player off the kicking team first. All right, and then so it's still a live ball, and they hadn't blown it dead. And then Calvin was, uh, like I said, smart enough to understand that man, that ball hit one of them. It's a live ball, picked it up, and uh, thank goodness he he runs really fast because he smoked down our sideline and was able to go the distance for the touchdown. Mark and then Terry. Um, Ron, just to be clear, is that the actual rule? It is. It, it, so if the ball hits but a like the, not the name, like the name of it, like you know the actual number of the rule. No, the sir, rule? I don't. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, okay, you're. Being uh, the, I'm not the, savant. The three young men that you'll talk to are the savants. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just the guy with gay in his hair right now. Okay. Um, and then just in general, I mean, to see you mentioned to not just that you won the game, but the way you won the game. Um, did it? show you anything you didn't know yet? Because obviously you'd seen it in practice. You, you, you mentioned you know these players, but to see them do it in a game against an SEC team, how much confidence or I guess belief do you think this gives you moving forward? Well, look, I, I told our guys, uh, actually our pregame meal to have confidence. And it's funny because I talked to him. I said, you know, we talked, like I said, about 60 minutes and then we're gonna have to be focused and detail. I knew they'd play with great energy. Um, but I told them at our pregame, I said, you know, we know how much we care about each other. We know how hard we work. We know how hard we prepare. And obviously now we get to show our fruits of our labors to the rest of the country. And people get to see how much you guys care about each other, how much you have sacrificed uh, for the people that have sacrificed to get you here. And, and that, that's the awesome thing is that we, we preach those things, you preach those things. When lose or draw, it, it came out victorious. And it just like I said, that's why I'm so happy for our young men because they understand uh, look, this game is just as important as the next one, uh, but just the, the fight and the battle, uh, the, the character of these guys, that, that means the world to me. Harry and then Devin. Hey, Coach, uh, pregame and on the field, this is one of the most uh, former players I've seen attending a game in a long time. And I know a lot of those guys come through the, the victory wall. How far do they go to help strengthen the brotherhood and the, the bond among the, common team, the current team? Yeah, look, our, our former players mean the world to us, right? To have Antonio Gibson there at the end of the title walk, you know, high-fiving all of us after just played a Thursday night game um, to former players there. Like I said, this game, uh, frankly, I, like I said, I was at the visitation for Danton Bartow. This game was, you know, one of the greatest linebackers ever wear a Tiger uniform. And then to go out and see J.J. Russell's performance, you know, man, that just kind of – I bet Dan's looking down from heaven saying, all right, JJ, thanks for showing out for your Tigers. And then and to recognize Isaac Bruce, right? Like I said, truly one of the greatest Tigers. And then the Calvin to go in and have another one of his games. You know, I'm sure Isaac's quite proud. And But look, all of our former Tigers, right? You know, whether it's guys that were fifth string or that were Hall of Famers, man, just to have them around. It, it's That's one of the unique things, right? With me being here six years and like a lot of our players, we recognize a lot of those faces, man. So it's so great. Last one for Devin. All right, Coach, I want to ask you, that's 21 in a row uh, in the Liberty Bowl. I want us to ask you about this home field advantage. The crowd was rocking. The, the fans were rocking the entire game. Just talk about that home field advantage of playing in the Liberty Bowl. Yeah, look, our, our fans were awesome. Like I mentioned to you guys before, my favorite part of the game was being able to have a almost a full crowd there in the Liberty Bowl, and they were cheering, right? They didn't let the weather possible to cheer them, uh, and they were loud. It made a difference. And if you ask our players, um, and seeing a full crowd in the Liberty Bowl, we feed off their energy. And so that's a definite home field bench. We talk about that nobody is able to come into our house and, and get away with anything. And so 
Um, our guys understand how important it is. And look, we've been down before, just like we were this this game. But our guys believe, and there's something special about playing Liberty Ball in front of our great fans. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.